Hello, my name is Matt Douglas. I'm the Complex Wound Specialist here at Smith & Nephew. Welcome to the Smith & Nephew Wound Club online module on Biofilm, which forms part of a series of modules you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around infection management. Today we will be discussing biofilms. By the end of this module, you will be able to understand the impact the biofilm has on healing, to understand what a biofilm is, to understand how a biofilm is formed, to identify the clinical challenges of biofilm, and to understand the step up and step down approach to biofilm management. Biofilm is essentially a thin layer of living material. In the last 25 years, microbiologists considered this to be the dominating state of bacteria in their natural ecological environment. A microbial biofilm may be defined as a community that is compromised of slowly metabolizing bacterial cells encased in a matrix made of polysaccharide, DNA and proteins. This matrix enables the community to adhere to almost, if not, any surface. The community may consist of one or different forms and types of bacteria coexisting in this biofilm. In a mature biofilm, the bacteria often manifest altered characteristics that confer increased levels of virulence and decreased susceptibility to antimicrobial agents. So evidence links the biofilm and non-healing chronic wounds. A few studies have highlighted that there's clinical evidence of biofilm in at least 78% of all chronic wounds. That's significant. Biofilm in wounds that has been demonstrated to delay normal wound healing and chronic inflammation from recurrent bacterial infections and immune cell lysis on biofilm affects the ability of the wound to progress towards healing. So in bacteria, in and around chronic wounds are slowly allowed to multiply, they will ultimately reach essentially a critical mass. They then begin by forming a biofilm. This biofilm is a community of the bacteria that is encasing themselves in a protective matrix capsule. So this protective capsule will then expand and then end up providing the microbes protection from your body's natural defences. It'll defend them from being engulfed by macrophages and also protect the biofilm on the wound bed from antibiotics. Unfortunately, what happens then is that these macrophages will then release an enzyme called protease. This is designed to break down protein, but that will ultimately start to break down good and healthy tissue in and around the wound bed itself. So this ongoing presence of the biofilm triggers a prolonged upfront inflammatory response. And this continued release of proteases by the macrophages degrades the growth factors and the provisional tissue matrix, essential for wound healing. Now, when it comes to identifying the bacteria and the biofilm, this is very difficult. Because what you would tend to do is our standard wound swabbing and culture techniques to detect any free floating planktonic bacteria. But unfortunately, they will not be able to sample any bacteria from within the biofilm itself. This means that the wound swab results often underestimate the bacterial load itself on the wound bed when the biofilm is present. The bacteria, especially when the biofilm becomes mature, becomes very difficult to eradicate with antibiotics. Antibiotics can only kill metabolically active bacteria and they form within the internal deep structure of the biofilm itself. So once the bacteria become metabolically inactive, those deep within the biofilm structure, then they will be unaffected by antibiotics and antiseptics. So it tends to be the bacteria that set deep within the outer layers of the critical mass of this biofilm late in the biofilm that, I'm, that is metabolically active. The mother and father cells within the biofilm become metabolically inactive and protected from antibiotics. So then, when we try and treat these biofilms that we potentially see as a way to manage the biofilm, sometimes when we use positively charged antimicrobial agents, such as, for example, ionic silver, 
then these are trying to bond with the negatively charged bacteria within the matrix. And unfortunately, because the cells within the matrix are metabolically inactive as well, they are not positively charged within the biofilm. Then the amount of silver required to kill the bacteria will be affected and they won't have a significant effect on the communities within the biofilm. What we need to use is a step up and a step down approach to biofilm management. So in the first few days of initiating therapy, it would be a combination of therapies that we will be applying. You do not want to aggressively, aggressively debride the wound bed because potentially you will not be able to physically see your biofilm on the wound bed itself. The fact that the wound healing has been delayed, the earlier you intervene with this effective debridement and anti-biofilm treatment, and this will be key to the step up, step down pathway of managing these treatments and ultimately moving on to a step up approach to managing the wound in the future. You can, however, use some empirical topical antiseptics such as iodine and silvers, and potentially you can use systemic antibiotics as well to manage the wound. Managing the host factors such as offloading, the use of compression bandaging, if the patient is diabetic, then manage their diabetes. Make sure they get effective nutrition, and if you really want to identify which trigger organisms you're dealing with, then you may have to use some form of point of care diagnostics such as a biopsy to identify the types of bacteria that we're dealing with here. Stepping down, we will then end five, days five to seven, optimizing and personalizing the treatment according to the healing status of the wound. So assess the inflammatory status of that wound and its healing status, appropriately, re appropriately debride and optimize the treatment and the topical antiseptic and systemic antibiotics that are being used to continue to manage the host factors. For the next one to four weeks, continue to de-escalate the treatment as the wound improves. Again, assess, continually assess the inflammatory status of the healing of the wound. Please use and perform maintenance debridement and reevaluate its need. Do you still need to continue using antiseptic antibiotics? and continue to manage the host factors. So once then we can evaluate the healing and we can actually see progress within the wound bed, then we can now move on to standard standardized care and potentially step up to some of the more advanced therapies such as negative pressure, etc., growth factors, skin grafts, combination products that will continue until that wound progresses towards healing. To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer the following quiz questions. What is the percentage of chronic wounds with a biofilm? The answer is 78% of all chronic wounds will have a biofilm on it. Question 2. What types of white blood cells try to attack a biofilm? Neutrophils and macrophages will attack a biofilm. Question 3. In a mature biofilm, are all the microbes metabolically active? The answer is no. Question 4. Can you physically see a biofilm? No. Question 5. Does culture swabbing a wound accurately reflect the bacterial burden? The answer is no. Well done. We are now at the end of the module. Take time to reflect on how you will take some of what you have learnt and apply it into your daily practice. It might be useful to think of some patients with wounds that are stuck in the cycle of inflammation and how you might manage that going forward. If you are on the NMC register, then please click the link shown to access a copy of the revalidation form. The form is in two parts, with a front sheet where you simply fill in the details and a back sheet which allows you for deeper reflection. 
Adding this to your reflection will mean that you will be able to claim extra CPD points. Thank you very much for your time today. Please remember to look at the other sections of the Smith & Nephew channel to access additional modules and help you on your learning journey. Thank you and good day.